Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Kajal Jindal from University of Delhi. Today, we are going to discuss about the module Electron Beam Lithography from the paper Nanoscience and Nanotechnology. So students, let us see what we are going to learn in this module. In this module, the nanoparticles are described and the classification is discussed. Also, the influence of size of nanoparticles on the properties is studied in details. In addition, the possible health risks which are posed by frequently used nanoparticles are discussed in this module. Finally, the application of nanoparticles in various diverse fields are discussed over here. What are basically nanoparticles? The particles which are ranging from 1 to 100 nanometer in size are termed as nanoparticles. In nanotechnology, the particle is an object which acts as a complete unit with regard to its properties. Individual molecules are not regarded as nanoparticles. Rather, these are the particles which demonstrate size-dependent properties. The properties of a nanoparticle substantially differ from those of bulk forms of the same materials. Now, what are nanoclusters? Nanoclusters are the groups of atoms, or I can say they are the group of molecules which have at least one dimension lying in 1 to 10 nanometer range. The size distribution within a nanocluster is very narrow. That is, almost all the particles which are present in the cluster are of approximately same size. The agglomerates of ultra-fine particles, that is nanoparticles or nanoclusters, are called nanopowders. Single crystals of nanometer dimensions or single domain ultra-fine particles are called nanocrystals. Let us now discuss the classification of nanoparticles. Nanoparticles can be further classified into following types depending upon their diameters. Firstly, there are ultrafine particles which are similar to nanoparticles and have dimensions in the range of 1 to 100 nanometer. Secondly, there are fine particles which have dimensions between 100 to 2500 nanometer. Thirdly, there are coarse particles which have dimensions between 2500 to 10,000 nanometer. Nanoparticles are highly significant for scientific research owing to the potential use in medicine, physics, electronics, optoelectronics, etc. Now, let us discuss about the background of nanoparticles. Even though the nanoparticles have attracted immense attention in the recent times, they have previously been used since long time. Artisans in Rome, as early as 4th century, used nanoparticles in the most famous lacquer cup produced from dichroic glass. Nanoparticles were also used in the 9th century Mesopotamia to create glittering patterns on the pots. In modern history, Gold and copper based patterns 
have been used in pottery during Middle Ages as well as Renaissance. The luster is usually from a metal film applied to the transparent surface of a glazing. If film is resistant towards oxidizing agents such as oxygen, the luster is still visible. The optical behavior of nano-sized metals was first described by Michael Faraday in his 1857 paper. Later, Turner pointed out that when thin film of metals such as gold and silver are coated over glass and are annealed at around 500 degrees centigrade, the properties of the metal film changes and the film is no longer continuous. These changes led to the enhanced transmission of white light, reduced reflection, an enormous increase in resistance of the films. Let us now discuss some astonishing facts about nanoparticles. Nanoparticles are essentially a bridge between atoms or molecules and the bulk form of material. The bulk materials demonstrate constant physical behaviors regardless of the size of the object. However, on the contrary, nanoscale materials exhibit size-dependent properties. And in most cases, these properties are remarkably different from the bulk counterparts. Therefore, as discussed, firstly, the size of a material approaches nanometer scale for nanoparticles. And secondly, the surface to volume ratio increases for nanoparticles. So, the ma materials undergo changes in the properties. On the other hand, in bulk materials, the bulk materials are usually larger than 1 micrometer in size and in that case, the ratio of surface to the volume of the material is negligible. Thus, it may be concluded that the astonishing properties of nanoscaled materials are caused by the larger surface area of nanoparticles and the surface dominates the behavior of such particles. Since nanoparticles are very small, they confine the electrons, thereby causing quantum effects. Thus, the optical properties of nanoparticles are highly unexpected. For instance, gold nanoparticles can have deep red to black color depending upon their size. The gold nanoparticles have very low melting points, about 300 degrees centigrade for the nanoparticles of 2.5 nanometer dimensions, then the bulk gold which corresponds to 1064 degrees centigrade. Nanoparticles have high absorption coefficients towards solar radiation than thin films of bulk materials. By adjusting the size, shape and composition of the particles, the solar absorption of the material can be controlled. Recent experiments have shown a zero forward scattering and improved forward scattering in core that is metal, shell that is dielectric nanoparticles. Both electric as well as magnetic resonances can be supported by core shell nanoparticles, thus exhibiting novel properties in comparison to pristine metallic nanoparticles. By controlling the size of the nanoparticles, the following property changes 
can be observed. Firstly, the quantum confinement in nanoparticles that are made from semiconductor materials. Secondly, surface plasma resonance in certain metallic nanoparticles. Thirdly, evolution of superparamagnetism in magnetic materials. In addition to these desirable changes, some undesirable changes can also occur at the nanoscale. For example, nanoparticles which are less than 10 nanometer made from ferromagnetic materials change the direction of the magnetization using room temperature thermal energy, thereby making them unsuitable for information storage applications. Owing to the large surface areas, the interaction of nanoparticles with solvent can overcome the destiny differences. Thus, suspensions of nanoparticles can be formed. Without this property, the materials either sink or float in a solvent. The incorporation of clean nanoparticles in polymers increases the strength of the resulting plastics. This has been supported by higher glass transition temperatures observed in these plastics. Additionally, mechanical tests have also demonstrated high stiffness of such materials. This happens because the hard nanoparticles transfer their favorable properties to the polymer host matrices. The applications of nanoparticles in textiles are important to prepare smart and functional clothes. Nanoparticles have been prepared from various materials such as metals, dielectrics, semiconductors. In addition to this, hybrid structures such as coercial nanoparticles have also been prepared. Semiconductor nanoparticles are also termed as quantum dots and the size as are also termed as quantum dots when the size is small enough, usually less than 10 nanometer, to demonstrate quantization of energy levels. These nanoparticles have diverse applications in medicine as drug carriers or imaging agents. Figure 1 shows a semiconductor quantum dot of approximately 5 nanometer of lead sulfide passivated by oleic acid, oleicamine, and hydroxyl ligands. Semi-solid and soft nanoparticles can also be fabricated. An example of semi-solid nanoparticles is liposome. Liposome nanoparticles can be used as targeted delivery agents for anti-cancer drugs as well as vaccines. The surface of nanoparticles can be modified to work as hydrophile as well as hydrophobic. That is, one half is hydrophobic and the other half is hydrophilic. Such particles are called as Jane's particles and are very effective in stabilizing immersions. They can self assemble at water or oil interfaces and act as solid surfactants. Let us now discuss some specific applications of nanoparticles. We will first discuss 
the application as surface coatings in biological field. The surface of the nanoparticles should be polar to provide good aqueous solubility and also they should prevent the nanoparticle coagulation. Highly charged surfaces lead to non-specific interactions while the polyethylene glycol terminated cells avoid non-specific bindings. Biomolecules can be attached to the nanoparticles to direct them to specific sites in the body. Even specific organelles in a cell or to monitor individual protein or RNA molecules. Most commonly used tags to mark the nanoparticles include monoclonal antibodies, aptamers, streptavidin or peptides. These tags must be attached with the nanoparticles covalently and also the quantity per nanoparticles must be controlled for efficient operation. Multivalent nanoparticles have several tags attached to them which may cause the clustering. This activates the cell signaling paths giving stronger anchoring. On the other hand, monovalent nanoparticles bear single binding sites. Thus, they prevent the cluster formation. These nanoparticles are suitable to track the behavior of individual protein molecules. Next important application of nanoparticles is in the field of health and safety. There are various speculations both medically as well as environmentally that nanoparticles are hazardous. Owing to the huge surface areas, these particles are highly reactive or catalytic. As they are extremely small, they can pass through the cell membrane and may interact with the cell organelles. Presently, this interaction is not very well understood. Nonetheless, the nanoparticles are unlikely to enter the cell nucleus that is Golgi complex or other cell organelles mainly because of the particle size and intercellular aggregation. These days, a large variety of cosmetics and sunscreens are produced which contain nanoparticles for effective working. It is still unknown whether the presence of nanoparticles in these products pose any health hazards or not. The investigations on the use of zinc nanoparticles have revealed that they do not get absorbed in the bloodstream in vivo. We will next discuss the possible health risks which are posed by various frequently used nanoparticles. Firstly, we will discuss about carbon nanotubes that is CNTs. Carbon nanomaterials are widely used in production of composites for vehicles, sports equipments, etc., as well as integrated circuits in electronics industry. The interactions of carbon nanomaterials, example CNTs, with natural organic matter greatly affect their coagulations as well as deposition, thereby affecting their transport transformation and exposure in aquatic environments. CNGs have shown some toxic impacts in various environments and a complete understanding 
of these harmful effects requires intense investigations. Secondly, we'll discuss about cerium oxide. Cerium oxide nanoparticles are widely utilized in electronics, biomedical tools, energy, fuel additives, etc. Due to such diverse range of applicants, the nanoparticles of cerium oxide usually disperse in environment, thereby exposing to the risk. Cerium oxide nanoparticles are being continuously released into the environment due to their use in fuel additives. Now the titanium dioxide nanoparticles, they are used in multiple products. Different sized nanoparticles made of titanium dioxide can be found in sunscreens, cosmetics, paints and coatings etc. Recent application area for these particles is to remove contamination from drinking water. Next is the nano silver. Silver nanoparticles are used in textiles, food packaging, etc., due to their antibacterial properties. The possibility of these particles to enter the food chain and thereby their impact needs extensive investigations. First is the iron. Apart from its applications, as smart fluids for optical polishing, as well as nutrient supplements, nanoscale iron is being investigated for water treatment as well. The next ap important application of nanoparticles is in the field of nanomedicine. Nanomedicine implies the application of nanotechnology for medical uses. It includes Medical uses of nanomaterials and biological devices, nanoscaled biosensors, etc. Future generation applications include biological nanoscaled machines. However, the possibilities of toxicity and environmental impact of nanoparticles is an important concern. Nanomaterials can be manipulated to perform various specialized functions. This can be achieved by interfacing the nanomaterials with various biomolecules or structures. Since the nanomaterials are similar in size to various biomolecules and structures, they can be used for in vivo as well as in vitro biomedical research and applications. Till now, various diagnostic devices, contrast agents, analytical tools, physical therapy applications and drug delivery vehicles etc. have been developed by integrating nanomaterials with biology. Figure shows the examples of few nanomaterials which are being studied for their potential use in medicine. It has been in the first case, the nanoparticles are being shown, whereas in second figure um, in B, uh, liposomes are shown, which are used for drug delivery. Figure 2C shows the dendrimus. Coming on to the next application in the field of drug delivery. This is one of the most celebrated application of nanotechnology, which is which is in targeted drug delivery to specific cells. Due to the possibility of transport of medicine directly to the affected area, the drug consumption can be minimized. This also lowers the side effects which are caused by the drugs. So targeted drug delivery is extremely significant in reducing the side effects of the drug as well as decreasing the treatment cost by lowering the drug consumption. Drug delivery focuses to maximize the bioavailability at the specific site in the body 
and it also maximizes the availability of the drug over a certain period of time. Nano-engineered devices can be used to achieve this due to their ability to target individual molecules. Also, the nanoscale devices offer various advantages such as less invasiveness, fast biochemical reactions and possibility to implant within the body. These devices are much faster and effective than the conventional drug delivery practices. The efficiency of nanomedicine depends on various factors. Firstly is the efficient drug encapsulation is one of the important factor. Secondly, the successful transport of the drug to specific site is important. And thirdly, the efficient release of drug is vital. Cancer treatment is another important application of nanoparticles. Owing to the large surface area to volume ratios, nanoparticles can attach multiple functional groups to itself, which can locate and bind to specific tumor cells. Furthermore, the small size of nanoparticles, that is 10 to 100 nanometer, allows them to preferentially accumulate at tumor sites as tumors lack an effective lymphatic drainage system. The limitations to conventional cancer chemotherapy, such as drug resistance, lack of selectivity, as well as solubility, can be overcome by using nanoparticles. Another important application of nanoparticles is in the field of imaging. Nanoparticles have great potential as in vivo imaging tools and devices. Nanoparticle based contrast agent agents, images, example ultrasound, can have favorable distribution and enhanced contrast. Nanoparticles can aid visualization of various changes in cardiovascular problems such as blood pooling, angiogenesis, atherosclerosis, etc., atherosclerosis, etc., atherosclerosis, etc. Due to their small size, nanoparticles can be very useful in oncology, especially in imaging. Quantum dots, when used for magnetic resonance imaging, in short abbreviated as MRI, create exceptional images of tumor sites. Cadmium selenide nanoparticles glow on exposure to ultraviolet light. So, when injected, they enter the cancer cells, thereby highlighting them. Nanoparticles are much brighter than organic dyes and can be excited only with single light source. Thus, use of fluorescent quantum dots can create much higher contrast images at lower cost in comparison to organic dyes. The disadvantage of nanoparticles is however that quantum dots are made from toxic materials. Coming on to the application of sensing, we know that nanotechnology on a chip is analogous to the lab on a chip technology. Sensor test chips containing thousands of nanowires are able to detect proteins and other biomarkers left behind by cancer cells could enable the detection and early diagnosis of cancer in the early stages from a few drops of a patient's blood. So students, let us summarize what we have learned in this module. In this module, nanoparticles were described and the classification was discussed. Also, 
the influence of size of nanoparticles on the properties was studied in this module. In addition, the possible health risks which are posed by frequently used nanoparticles were discussed in this module. Finally, the applications of nanoparticles were highlighted. Thank you students for your attention.